the Demeter, on charter from Romania to London. Shipping private crates, contents unknown. Welcome back to Flick Flops, the podcast where we review movies that the critics decry and tell you if they satisfy. Today, we're discussing the new released film, The Last Voyage of the Demeter, starring Corey Hawkins, Ashling Franchosi, Liam Cunningham, and David Desmalchen. The story is adapted from one chapter of the novel Dracula by Bram Stoker. Stoker, not Stroker. <laughs> Stroker Ace. And hey, follow the titular, titular ship in its journey from Romania to England and the discovery of what lurks among the private containers in their cargo hold. But does this movie deliver on its supernatural gothic horror origin, or is it the bon voyage for this edition of the Dracula Film Archives? I just screwed all that up, but find out, as Andy and I now discuss, um, hopefully better than I did the intro, Andy Parker. The last Gary, you talk pretty TV. someday. Me, me someday. Me done. Some, well, someday so me they done. use all. You got all the words. <laughs> I use all the words. Uh, I listen. I struggle with the darn Demeter, Demeter, <laughs> Demeter. You know. Yeah. Sadly, I did look that up because I'm like, and they do say it in the movie, like right off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, well, thankfully I've been saying it right because it's one of those words that looks like it should probably be pronounced differently. Well, I mean, like, I don't. Is it a word? Like, what does it mean? I didn't. It's look a up Greek. Word. I think it's a Greek god or goddess. Oh, okay. but. Good, good. I, I did all that deep research on. It. In I fact, no I believe I believe the mast of the the ship there, not the mast, but the uh, figure figurehead. Yeah, the one behind you there. Um. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, it's not the real picture, but. Yeah, but I was just saying. What's whatever my last thing's right? called? Uh, yeah, that figurehead. I think is what it's called. It's not this and guy, right? This isn't Demetrius. No, is not. It? No. He's the Dracula. No. He's. <laughs> The devil. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, <laughs> uh, the last voyage of the the Demeter, Demeter. Uh, we both, I, you just saw it yesterday. I saw it today, so we're both fresh off of seeing this bad boy. Um, let me jump into this quickly because uh, there's not a lot to discuss. Um, number wise, I've got a budget, uh, forty five million dollars to make this movie. Clearly, this was spent on some special effects. This movie yeah. uh, is rife with them. I mean, it has to be. It was set in, what, 1867. They did a, a, a an amazing job with this, the, the boat and the, um, the, the effects. It was fantastic. I, I enjoyed that immensely. Um, I do not have any box office because it's just released. Yeah, I mean, too new. The one number I saw was about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, but I mean, I don't know what that means. It, it, I saw it in a theater with four people in it. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we well, didn't we, add much to it. Yeah, we saw it for uh, for the sneak preview kind of thing. Yeah, where it's like the the early release, and um, there were it was uh, one of my daughters and Tara and I, and then there was another couple in front of us and one behind us. So, a right. total of seven people in there. Um, yeah. Well, so we got. Um, Rotten Tomatoes does have a score right now, at least a critic score, which is uh, 44. Technically rotten based on the their aggregator. Yeah. Um, b- 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 the director is Andre Overdahl, and I'm sure Over, I'm not yeah. saying Over, that. I think it is Overdahl. Correctly. Yeah. Uh, quick history of his. He, he's, movies he's done that you may know, Troll Hunter, Autopsy of Jane Doe, uh, scary stories to tell in the dark, and all of those are fresh. Uh, now, I I haven't seen any of those uh, previous movies, but he he apparently is okay with what he does. Yeah, uh, the writers in this bad boy. Uh, oh, this is where it gets butchery. Um, let me read these. Uh, I'm I will apologize. If you could do better than than I did with my. Uh... Yeah, I mean, so <laughs> some guy named Broggy F. Shoot, Broggy Broggy. Uh, he doesn't have any real credits that I can think of. I mean, I looked it up. It's something called the Samaritan. And Actual Charlie pronunciation F- below. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, well yeah, yeah, Gary will fix that later. Uh, so he, he didn't have a whole lot to go off of. And uh, the other guy since uh, credited with writing is a guy named Stefan 
Razowitsky? Razowitsky? God, I'm really not educated. Um, <laughs> he's from Vienna, Austria. He's a filmmaker over there. He's made some, done a few things. He's been in the business since like 96. He's got a lot of rotten on his side. And I'm looking right now as we're talking, there's not a whole lot that we would recognize. Uh, okay. There's a lot of writer director over in that area. I mean, some of these have box office of like $64,000, you know, his biggest one, something called the counterfeiters. Uh, he was the writer director, 5.5 million back in 2007 was the gross on that. And it's sitting at 93 and 88. So that must be pretty good. Uh, I just, I haven't seen it. So I can't speak intelligently about it. And then the last guy credited with some writing on it is a guy named Zach Okowitz. Uh, let's see what his, um, he's, Got a, he, he, no, so he was a screenwriter for Bullet Train, Gary. Um, There's one I know. Which, and I'll, I say this, now that made $103 million. It's uh, rotten, according to the tomato meter, but it's fresh with the critics. But um, I, I struggled with that movie. Maybe we'll discuss that later. That movie didn't yeah. do anything for me. So, you know. Yeah, you and I discussed this back. That's been a while yeah. ago now. But I actually enjoyed that movie, but. You never, I don't think you made it through it or anything, if I remember yeah. correctly. So, so, um, we'll that's what I got that sometime for the, for the writers and the directors. And if you want, we can jump into our ratings and talk about yeah. the film. Let's do it. So, right. <laughs> oh, skid it uh, Bow, bow, bam, skiddy. Uh, so I'm fresh off of this thing. I just saw it literally a couple hours ago. And I'll give you my rating, and then you can give yours, and we will discuss. Uh, let me find right. the correct rating, not to give Gary's rating, because I did that last time. This is oh, yeah, where I'm yeah. at with this movie. You ready? Yeah. And okay, Go I, ahead. Gave it those, I gave Two. it two poos. And again, just to reiterate, in our ranking system, you want lower numbers. You do not want high. So five poos would mean it's a terrible turd of a film. The yep. less amount of poop you see and the less amount of toilet paper you see. Aces, your video aces. <laughs> so <laughs> really great guys. Okay. <laughs> They're the best guys around. Uh I gave it two and we'll discuss that. Gary, what's your rating, sir? My rating is a one TP. You gave it one TP. One All TP. right. One TP to follow the two poos. So uh, <laughs> do a good wipe job, yeah, you know. Do it, do it right. <laughs> don't don't straggle. Yeah. Um, so I'll jump into this real quick. This film is an hour and 58 minutes long. Uh, it is based roughly on literally just 16 pages out of the book Dracula, which I think is incredible that you made it a movie out of one chapter. I can speak uh, to that too, by the way. Okay. If you want to jump in, go um, right ahead. Just, uh, I, I took a moment today to read the 16 pages. <laughs> oh, good. Out of curiosity. Um, and I will tell you that the there's a child on board in the movie. Um, the captain's grand grandchild. Mm -hmm. um, there is a doctor on board, which is, I would call the main character. Um, yeah. And, and then there is the woman that is on board without giving anything away with any of those. Um, none of those are part of the book. <laughs> So oh, it's uh, really just the 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 most the biggest section of the that particular chapter is just the captain's log, which a lot of that is read during the movie. Um, OK, and it follows it to a degree. But there's a lot of I mean, obviously, they had to do a lot to make a narrative out of it. And to do so, they added these characters and they but I do want to come back to that main character later when we kind of get towards some later okay. notes but i just wanted to mention that that i did go ahead and read it out of curiosity to see exactly you know what we're dealing with yeah this this is maybe want to read the book uh, i've tried to read dracula a couple of times in my life and uh i never stayed with it and uh you know you and i both uh, have an appreciation of horror so I, i'm going to uh, endeavor to read it here within the next couple of weeks uh just because i i think i owe it to myself and to brahm stoker uh so uh, again based stroker, as i like to call stroker whatever apparently like judging <laughs> stroking to the left stroking to the right uh oh, but again i think it's impressive that you made a movie out of 16 pages uh my 
okay, if I'm going to get like a criticism, why I gave it two poops is that this movie to me, again, everything is just my opinion. So it means nothing uh, is just, it was the pacing was a little slow for me. And I found myself more than once drifting a little like, okay, like, you know, I'm not, and, and, and I don't have a suggestion on what you could have cut out and maybe you do Gary, but, for me, it's just like there was moments of the film. That I'm like, mm, OK, I, I, I'm, I'm done with this. Let's move forward with the story. And then there were moments where I was like, oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. So it, it, the two for me comes from the fact that I think just the pacing was a little off. Not bad. It's not horrible. This film was shot magnificently. Like I was. Yeah, I was totally lost in the scenery. I enjoyed this. I sat back and just let 18 60 set whatever it's just happened loved it uh most of the characters I think were fine i had no problem with the characters that i can that i can recall that the, some of the acting was outstanding uh the mm -hmm. little the little boy was great uh i have a couple issues with the script that we can either discuss or which is not because i don't want to spoil anything yeah um, careful in that, de that yeah. department but but you and i off camera we will discuss yes <laughs> uh, captain was great I have. I think the guy did a great job as that. Some of the effects yeah. were just outstanding. I mean, they did. They did a great job. Uh, and the other other slight criticism I have, and this is just me, I don't like this type of version of Dracula. You know, this kind of golem looking Dracula. Mm -hmm. I don't have a better option. I'm just saying. Maybe it's because I'm used to uh, what Stephen King. Well, even Stephen King's in Salem. I was gonna was. say. I was gonna say Salem's not. I'm surprised to hear you say that, but. Yeah. But just this whole, yeah. So I guess in my head, and you can tell me where I might be wrong. I always assumed Dracula was just a a guy that had eternal life, not some kind of demon like creature. And I think that's where in my head I get a little confused because I want to be more human like, just mm -hmm. with insane monster uh, background, not a real monster. And and again, yeah. it, it's nitpicking, not picking on the film. This, this is a it's like me in the superhero stance. I just hate it. It move on find something else yeah go i turn it over to you the man from <laughs> has the floor thank you uh well first of all i will say that, that it is shot brilliantly and one of the things that i i thought when the movie started was first of all why has this not been done before yeah um it's a very interesting idea it kind of reminds me of um something i try to think of something that's kind of claustrophobic because you're stuck on a ship with this monster so you know, yeah. there's nowhere to kind of like um, Alien or something like that. Um, yeah, you, you are in, in limited. The, yeah, you're limited in the space that you can go. So you're you're stuck on there. Um, I thought that the idea for that, taking that out and making that into a movie was a really good idea. And I thought the setting and everything was great. They did a great job with the effects, the, the ship, everything. Um, so there was great attention to detail. And I, I thought the casting was great. I don't have any issue with the casting. Uh, I think the David Desmolshin, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name right. He stood out to me because I recognized him from some, th like I like Liam Cunningham, the, the captain I've seen and stuff before. Okay. Um, and he's great. I mean, everything I've ever seen him in, he's great. So I didn't. Which one was he, David? He's the one that was like the second. Okay. Got the, Volchek the, or Borchek. I can't remember their names. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah. I know what you're talking about. Um, I, anything I've ever seen him and I thought he was goofy like his character is goofy and I think you know no offense to the dude but when I look when I've seen him in other stuff I thought this is a goofy looking dude yeah he played like a polka dot guy in Suicide Squad I mean, so he's like a you know I think about yeah. and seeing him in this I was like wow that was a interesting trans like he's really good in it like yeah. I was like he should be playing more roles like this anyway um so he's really good I've just it just struck me as seeing somebody that I'd seen only in goofy roles. Maybe I'm missing some stuff uh, from him that that uh that I just didn't realize. But yeah, um, I will say that um, and this is me telling you the good things first yeah. that I that I liked about the movie. Um, there's this, you know, there's this foreboding kind of over the whole. You know, there's yes. this creeping kind of dread to the whole movie. They do a couple jump scares. I thought they were pretty well telegraphed. You're not going to get super shocked by them. And again, uh, you kind of know when they're coming. They're a little yeah. tired to me. 
I understand yeah. you, they put him in there, but I'm like, eh, like the lady next to me jumped. And I was like, yeah. And I'm mean, not saying I did too, my wife. Yeah. <laughs> But the thing is, and so I'm not sitting there going, oh, I saw that coming a million miles away. I'm just saying, uh, okay. Well, you kind of, you get that, you kind of feel it, you know, like they do that yeah. uh, score, the score of the movie kind of brings it. But, and I, I don't really want to give anything away. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, that's too it. Too much. But I will say that the movie starts with the discovery of the ship. And then goes back four weeks. Yes. So you kind of get sort of like. Kind of know where it's going. Yeah. You kind of know some stuff where it's going, but then, you know, there's, there's more to it towards the end. And I don't, again, I don't want to give anything away with that. So uh, bad things as with a lot of movies lately, too long. Um, Eris said that she could probably cut 30 minutes out of it. I'm going to say more like 15 to 20 minutes ish. Um, I feel like it could be cut. Um, I feel like if you notice how long a movie is when you're watching it, then that's not a good sign. Yeah, um, I agree. 100%. And, and in this one, that was one of those ones where I was like, and then I was a little worried. Again, I don't want to give anything away, but towards the end, I was a little worried that they're going to go further. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, this should be cut off by now. Um, I thought some of the decisions from the crew was weird. And that probably comes to the writing that you're talking about. Yeah. That's something we're going to discuss um, afterwards. Yeah. We can't really go too much into that, but um, even though it's set in the late 1800s, you think some people would have more common sense than, but whatever. Um, <laughs> and then I have a, I have a couple complaints about one's not so much a complaint because I understand where they're coming from. Um, but the marketing of the movie, I, first of all, the trailers, I, I feel like they just give away too much with trailers anyway. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the trailer for this movie gives a lot of the movie away as far as, um, the scenes that you actually see Dracula, you see a lot of them <laughs> in the trailer. Yeah. Um, and I have a problem with that, but the one thing that I don't think they can get around is I feel like the marketing, if if you went into this movie not knowing this was a Dracula movie and you only went because you knew that something was on board with these people, I think that would be, you would you would take in that, it's a much different movie in that aspect. And yes. you discover it and then you're like, wow. You know, knowing that going in, I feel like um, I, they, don't, they can't really get around that. I think Dracula is the draw to the movie. So it's kind of hard to not do that. Sure. And I don't, I don't think we're in an age where you can especially with horror films because they're so hit or miss. I don't think you can like not use that part to draw them in. So, you know, I understand that that's part of it, but it's just a shame. I think this would be a great movie in a few years when, when people d rediscover it and don't know anything about it and then watch it yeah. and like crap. I didn't even know this was Dracula. Yeah, I mean, that's um, what drew me in was the, the Dracula. Uh, me too. Storyline. Otherwise it, me just watching a movie about a, a a boat or a haunted ship or whatever. I'm like, mm. I mean, right. I'll see it eventually, but I wasn't going to rush to the theater and see it. But, right. You know, you and I both saw the previews and we're like, Oh, we got to see this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, one, one real quick thing that I'm just going to throw a quick spoiler on just a spoiler alert for this one moment. Just give me 30 seconds and you can just skip that. Go. If you're even still watching, uh, but, uh, Adding the main character to the to the movie, and then the way that that plays out at the end, I'm still trying to be somewhat big. Less, yeah. They made it feel like they were going to. This is like the launch of something, like a series or something. Oh, okay. And I don't. I mean, it. I guess if you're Dracula aficionado, if you're of the book, you know, a fan of the book, that you might be a little off put by that that they not only create a character but then they're going to try to milk that whole idea for something else maybe and that may not be what they intended it may have just been a right. vague and you well, know kind of wrap up you know about the ending yeah 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 okay again yeah. trying to be right i know i know just i know exactly what you're saying because i was like yeah. i felt a very similar pang i was like well is this gonna be yeah a part two or right? just another 
Uh, all right. I'm yeah. in. I mean, I'll, I'll still still go see it. I mean, you know, uh, he, again, you know, as we pick apart the films, it's not saying it's bad. I just you got to watch who you recommend it to because I, I know plenty of people in my life I would not recommend this to because they would call me later and go that movie sucked, man. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely one of those ones where it, you know if you go to a horror movie because you want to see the jump scares and the and the uh, like the i don't know not the slow brooding type of horror movies you're not you're probably not going to like this yes right. it does have a couple jump scares like i said definitely has a lot of gore but not way over the top just a few moments that are pretty the death scenes are pretty uh crazy at times but overall it's not it's not a hack and slash kind of movie i guess is what i'm getting at this is more for people that you know want something a little different in that kind of claustrophobic Mm -hmm. um yeah i mean the, the the tension is built fantastically yeah you know the music the music sits there right there and just just hovers above and, and you you find yourself a little tense like oh geez like even though you have a kind of a gut feeling what's going to be happening but you're still there you're still sitting on the closer to the edge of your seat but yeah. um you know it i mean again it's it's and it's tricky you're, you're trying to make a a modern or a new take on a story that's been around for a few years, a couple, <laughs> you know? Uh, so yeah. I, I mean, look, I, I applaud them for it. I think what they did is, is fantastic. Um, just like a, an agreement of it. It's a little long. I, and again, I don't know where I would tell you to cut it. It's just a little, it felt yeah. long as I'm watching. Right. It. Right. So like you said, if you start noticing the time, like you start checking your watch, you're like, okay, you're starting to lose people. Yeah. So maybe we trim the fat a little bit here and there. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, one quick note on the uh, the demon aspect of the design, um, where he's not so much human. Um, I did notice that there was the over time, and I, I, you know, one thing I'll say for off camera, but um, he does sort of change as he's yes, fed, you know, as it goes, and I think. You know, I've never read Dracula either. I've only based everything I know about it on every other film we've ever seen, you know? Yes. Um, so I've always kind of felt like um, part of the lore might be that, you know, he was a man at one time, but he was cursed. And then as a result of that, he's this creature that must feed, but can use his powers to yeah. appear more human. And, and, and yeah. so I don't know. I mean... I'd love to hear comments on that below. If people have read the book and they know uh, more about yeah. it, um, they can add that. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately the only, again, it's a completely fictional story. So anything we know about Dracula is what we've been shown. Yeah. So um, this just felt very golem Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I kept waiting for him to say, you know, my ring, my pretties. And... <laughs> His blood is his precious, or not yeah, his. Yeah. Blood. So, <laughs> and, and again, I, I I'm a broken record. I don't have a better option. I just thought there'd be something different for me, and then uh, maybe yeah. my expectations are a little too much. But, and again, like you said, by pointing out, I was going to say Stephen King, but Salem's Lot is clearly this is, and they're all based on yeah. Nosferatu, the old film from back in the the silent film. So, um, yeah. Uh. I know. I guess I was thinking more interview with a vampire. I want to see more Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise vampire than <laughs> than some actual monster, <laughs> or or Renfield vampire. A little more Nick Cage. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe he gets there because you know he had to. Sure, get some he, more blood in him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. Uh, all right. Well, that's all I got. I don't know if yeah, you have anything I, more. I mean, I, I, you know, I think we we. Um, said enough about it that you should get an idea whether you feel like you rush out to see it or not. I enjoyed it. Just felt like it was a little too long. Yeah. I mean, I still, I'd recommend it. If you are into horror to a degree, it, you'll enjoy it. If you are uh, definitely a fan of Dracula, I mean, you, you, you should yeah. enjoy it. It's an extra uh, chapter of an, a movie to watch. Yeah, but now I like, you know, now I, I, I need to read the book because I need to, I need some perspective of this. Yeah. But that's it. Uh, Thanks if anybody's still watching this late into the show. You're awesome. That's right. Thumbs up. All right. We're out of here. Thanks, guys. Peace.